Hi guys, in this lesson we'll take a look at the rate of reaction. So the first question we've got to say is what is the rate of the reaction? So in chemical engineering terms, the rate of the reaction can be defined as the rate of change in the concentration of a reacting species or a product per unit time, per unit volume, area or per unit weight. Now, in most cases, the rate is defined as a function of the volume when the reaction mixture is taking place in a homogeneous single phase system. So homogeneous simply means that it is the same. So it's either going to be all liquids or all gases. Now, the rate of the reaction is represented by minus Ra. And if you've seen any of our previous lessons where we model CSTRs and batch reactors, you would have seen the minus Ra as part of the, the design equation. So we had the minus Ra multiplied by V. That was for the reaction um, part of the general mole balance. Now when the system isn't single phase, then the rate of the reaction can be better expressed such that the multi-phase system in that all the bases can be used, the nature of the process can determine which is the most convenient. Or a two-phase liquid-liquid system in which the area is the most commonly and more convenient way of designing such a system. If we have a solid catalyzed system, then the most common is the surface area and the catalyst weight. So what essentially we are doing here is we need to say to ourselves, what is the key parameter or the easiest parameter that would allow us to understand what is happening at any given point within the system? So, of course, a solid catalyst, we can determine the surface area or the weight of the catalyst being used and use that as the indication in order to calculate the rate of the reaction. Likewise, if we have a two-phase liquid-liquid system, then again we have to use the area. Although we can use other uh, systems, but in terms of what is more convenient to us, we tend to use the area. Now, a generalised reaction would then allow us to see how we can create a rate expression. So if we take this very generic reaction here, so we have a plus B plus C goes to product P. Now, if we use a power law, then the rate expression becomes the following. Whereby we have minus Ra is equal to K. So this is a reaction rate constant, K, is multiplied by Ca to the power alpha 1, Cb to the power alpha 2, and Cc to the power alpha 3. Now, these alphas, we'll discuss these in just a second, but the capital CA and CBCC, these are the concentrations of component A, component B, and component C. Now, the lowercase letters here denote the stoichiometric coefficients, and the stoichiometric coefficients are very, very important for determining the rate of the reaction. So... The alpha here represents the order of the reaction. So we'll define the order of a reaction based upon the total powers of the reacting species. So when we talk about the order, we discuss this at length in our online course in reactor design and mass and energy balances, because when we model different types of reactors, the the equations will change depending on the order of the system. So we can have zero order, first order, second order. And what we see is that the equations, when we change the order, the actual modeling equations for, say, batch time are a lot different. So we have to know the order of our system, which is when we use the stoichiometric coefficients. So again, we'll use the same reaction and we'll use the same expression that we had before. However, from the rate expression, we can see that each of the reactants, A, B, and C, has to the power, so they contribute one. 
So therefore, the overall reaction rate would be 3. So what we do is we add up the values of the stoichiometric coefficients of the reactants only. So what we then say is that alpha 1 is A, alpha 2 is B, and alpha 3 is C in this case. So because these are all 1, then the total order of the system would be 3. If we had, say, a reaction that had 2A plus B goes to C, then this would also be a third order reaction because we add the stoichiometric coefficients. So we have 1 here and 2 here. So the overall is 3. Now we'll just try a couple of different questions here just to express and work out the order of the reaction if we assume that we have elementary reactions. So here we're just interested in the order. So again, we use that as our guide. And we know that the convention is that we work out the alphas, so the, the stoichiometric coefficients, we take the summation and that gives us the order. So the first part A is third order, because again, we have two here and we have one here. We then have for part B, now this one is quite tricky, because what we have is A goes to B, where B goes to C, and C goes to A. So it's like a round trip. So therefore, the overall order of the reaction is just first order, because we take just A as the initial reactant. Although A is a product, this is the initial reactant with a stoichiometric coefficient of 1. Now for C, we have stoichiometric coefficient of 1 here and 1 here. Although this is reversible, with respect to A, we have a second order reaction, because we have 1 here and 1 here. And then the final one would be third order, because we have a stoichiometric coefficient of 1 here and a stoichiometric coefficient of 2. And Again, because these are reversible, that doesn't change the order of the system. That would affect what the equation would look like for the rate expression. But here we're just interested in the order of the system. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully that clears up the idea of the reaction rate and how we read off the order. For more information and to take a closer look at these kind of equations please check out our website for our full online course on reactor design if you like this video please like and subscribe to the channel leave any comments in the comment section below and we hope to see you again